Hey everybody, this is Taylor Edrington with Royal Gorge Anglers. Hope you're doing well uh, as we roll into the month of May. Pretty exciting fishing around here. Uh, you know, kind of wrapping up April, rolling into May, just really a number of our watersheds fishing exceptionally small water, the Arkansas Basin, the South Platte Basin. Uh, and now the really exciting piece that we get to add into the mix is our still water venues. Uh, we've been fishing uh, Deweese Reservoir here here locally, Brush Hollow Reservoir, as well as uh, Pueblo Reservoir, um, dabbling in a few days on Antero and now 11 Mile Reservoir as those have opened and Spinney Mountain Reservoir opens this weekend, the first weekend in May. Um, so really exciting. Um, obviously our primary reservoirs that we really focus on throughout the summer season, kind of spring through summer season and into the fall would be those South Park reservoirs, Antero, Spinney, and 11 Mile. Antero ramps are open. Uh, our guides with power boats have been on the, on Antero here, um, the last, uh, week or so and spinny opening obviously this weekend and 11 mile, uh, ramps have been open. So, um, really starting to get into that prime season. Um, and it, as many of you know, the first few weeks of the year can be some of the best weeks of the year, uh, on those South Park reservoirs because you've just got you know, little to no pressure. Um, spinny obviously closed throughout the winter season. So as soon as it opens up, the fish just, they're on a feeding frenzy. They're, you know, they're cruising, they're looking, they're foraging, uh, you know, looking for food. Uh, and so they're very proactive feeders in that window of time. And you can do really well as the waiting angler, you know, just kind of walking the edges, sight fishing, um, some of those really big fish will be caught in the next couple weeks um, from the bank. And if you like to float tube, it's cold out there right now to do it, but um, can be a really good method on a, a calm day to get out there on any of those reservoirs and, and get after it. And, uh, you know, obviously if you've got a power boat, um, really optimal um, to, uh, get out there, get after it, cover a lot of ground on the lake, um, and, uh, you know, uh, really get it dialed in from the boat. Um, but like I said, some really great opportunities for, for the weight angler, the angler that just wants to walk the shoreline, uh, here in the next, uh, couple weeks. Um, and so just wanted to talk through some basic rigging for you. Uh, a lot of, for a lot of you, still water fishing, lake fishing is relatively, a relatively new thing. For many of you, you've been doing it a long time, but um, really want to keep it basic for you, but just give you a, a, a couple of ideas on uh, rigging and what gear to bring, uh, what to be ready with, and then maybe show you just a handful of flies that we do really well with in the spring, and then ramping up into the early summer season as we start to see a lot of the lake mayflies and caddis become really active. Um, you know, really important ones to note, the calabatus, um, as we, uh, you know, get into that season. And um, then we'll kind of, um, you know, adjust uh, the video based on conditions and what we see um, and produce an, another video as we really get into the prime summer season um, with the addition of damsels and those things. But there are some really core flies to take advantage of in the spring, um, you know, namely the chronomids, um, some attractor flies, you know, egg pattern scuds, um, some leech patterns, things of that nature that you'll do really well with in the springtime. And then, you know, the, the switch kind of flips um, and becomes more hatch focused as we progress um, uh, into the summer season. Um, one of the things I just wanted to talk to you briefly about uh, before we get into flies is, um, you know, what kind of rod should you be prepared with and, and how should you rig and what, how should you be prepared, um, you know, with that kind of gear as, as you head to the lake here in the early spring. Personally, uh, I like to be prepared with at least two rods um, at hand, um, ready to roll. 
Uh, and I do like, um, you know, those to be heavier rods typically. Um, I'm gonna carry a couple of six weights with me typically. Um, one six weight uh, rigged with a full floating line. And I do like that to be a pretty heavy diameter head, um, aggressive full floating line so that I can really bomb out a pretty heavy indicator rig, whether I'm from the shore or from the boat or from a float tube. I need to be able to cut wind well. Um, so a pretty aggressive line like say a Rio Predator or a Rio Grand, something of that nature, maybe an Orvis Pro Power Taper, something that's a half line weight heavy at, at the minimum. So I can really uh, bomb a cast, whether it be overhead or roll cast out there and it'll carry in windy conditions. One of the things you'll encounter on still water venues in especially high elevation still water venues like our South Park Reservoirs is pretty much always gonna be wind present, okay? And sometimes a lot of wind present. So um, you really want that aggressive line for those situations. Um, that full floating um, line um, setup, I will then um, integrate some type of indicator, a slip indicator for those longer leaders. Obviously it's good later in the year when you're in the float tube, power boat, and you're fishing out over the weed beds um, and you need that long leader. But typically in the spring, when we're just kind of seeing cruising fish around the edges of the lake and sight fishing more, you can kind of get away with say a 10 to 12 foot leader, total leader length. Um, you can do a, an airlock indicator or an indicator of your choice. Um, make sure it's relatively large so you can see it in oscillation um, in, in the waves. Um, and, uh, you know, then we'll kind of tune in to where the fish are cruising. So you kind of, you'll be sight fishing, looking for fish actively, kind of see um, what depth those fish are, are typically cruising at calibrate your indicator there, set your flies at about one and a half times the depth that you're seeing cruising fish. Run, um, you know, typically my terminal um, diameter, I want to be about 3X and I do love fluorocarbon. Uh, you know, 4X at the very lightest, these fish are hot and a lot of times really big in the spring. So don't be fishing that five and six X, leave that at home, three and four X, um, fluorocarbon down to my first fly and then I'll typically tag a second fly off of it. A lot of times I like to run a jig style leech as my first fly, my lead fly, um, maybe a scud, maybe an egg pattern and then I'm going to run a coronamid which is basically a big midge larva that you find in lakes. I'll show you a few um, options here shortly. Um, so that rod that I've described first is your what's called static indicator rig. Um, that's built when you see cruising fish, you can bomb it out there, lead them, um, let it sit, maybe twitch the indicator a little bit, move the flies a little bit, add split shot as needed depending on how heavy your flies are, but you want to get down in front of the fish and then them cruise and intercept the fly at their depth boom, you know, just watch the indicator. Sometimes you won't see the fish. Sometimes you'll just be blind casting on say foam lines, current lines that you see, um, you know, but that that is rod number one. Rod number two is a streamer rod, a leech rod, a, a, a rod that has either a relatively fast intermediate sink or maybe a sink tip. Um, I like personally, um, a triple density sink tip for these scenarios in which um, the first density is intermediate sink, second density is a uh, sink three or three inch per second, third density towards the tip is a sink five or five inch per second density sink rate. Um, you can find those um, from Orbis, you can find them from SA, triple density sink tip um, is kind of what I'm looking for. You could go out there with a full sink line if you wanted to. I find the the triple density sink tips are a lot easier to cast, pick up from um, a standing position on the bank, cast bomb overhead or roll cast. Then I'm going to incorporate a little bit shorter, say a six to seven foot 
total length leader um, with 3x. Um, typically, I won't even go as light as 4x on these rigs because when you hit a fish, stripping a fit, stripping the fly, boom, that's a lot of contact pressure. So you do want, you know, even maybe 2x, um, but 3x fluorocarbon, um, six seven foot length total total length on the leader. And then I'm incorporating um, any number of leech patterns that could be a, you know, maybe a, a jig style leech that could be something more like a thin mint, um, woolly booger even, the classic, um, could be a bigger streamer, it could be something like a, a bait fish imitation, which I fish a lot, like say a, a mini dungeon white or um, a rainbow baby gonga or um, game changer, something like that. Something to get the fish's attention. Fish are very opportunistic feeders in the spring. They will eat other small fish. Um, so definitely keep that in your wheelhouse as, as well. Um, but I do like a lot of leech patterns, like say, you know, bow faces or slump busters or things of that nature, cone head stay down, you know, and they cover a lot of bases. It could be a small bait fish, it could be a leech, it could be a lot of things. So those are the two rods that I will carry when I am focusing in the early spring on any still water venue. Doesn't matter where you're at, but South Park Reservoirs in particular, those are the rods and rigging setups that I personally like um, in my 20 plus years of, of fishing those uh, still water venues. Let's uh, go take a peek at um, some fly patterns that uh, should do well for you on any still water venue in the spring and moving into the early summer. So let's take a look at uh, some still water fly basics here as we uh, enter the spring window of time uh, and then moving into kind of the early summer window, obviously kind of through in a calabatus, definitely to be prepared with um, as we move into that mayfly season on uh, your reservoirs or high mountain lakes. Um, but we do have two distinct categories here. On the far right, uh, we've got more our um, patterns that we like to strip or retrieve uh, on say an intermediate or, or intermediate sink line. And then these first two rows are gonna be more for static indicator nymphing. Um, so let's start there. Um, if I am running a static indicator nymphing rig, um, I will typically like something on this left side as my lead fly and then drop off something a little bit smaller, obviously focused more on coronamids um, right now, as you can see. Um, but starting kind of with our lead flies, we've got, um, you know, some really strong options in the egg pattern category. This is a sparkle tail micro egg. Um, our uh, scud population will be very active um, in the early spring. So orange um, beadhead scud, and then um, more of a hunchback scud and kind of gray olive. Um, they will eat those orange scuds for egg patterns too. So that's a nice crossover in the springtime. Um, Zach Takish's uh, snail, which will be one of our go-tos throughout the season, and you are not going to find this pattern really anywhere else. Um, really good go-to fly on any still water venue. There's a lot of crustacean life in, in our reservoirs and lakes. Um, and then two uh, of Landon Mayer's uh, micro jig leeches, one black, one olive, as you can see here, those are both uh, size 16. I do like 14s and 16s on those guys. Great for a static indicator rig lead fly. Then as we move into dropper flies, we've got two um, great um, coronamid pupa here. Um, these are um, called Clearwater pupa, Rowley's Clearwater pupa. Um, one in olive, one in black. I particularly like the black and our South Park reservoirs. We've got a Frenchy coronamid, which is one of my go-tos day in, day out, really throughout the season. Uh, serendipity coronamid, um, that one will be a go-to pupa as well for you. 
Um, and you'll notice these are just big midge larvae. They're size 12, 14, rather than 18, 20. But that being said, do pre be prepared with a little bit smaller um, midge patterns out there. This is called a CrossFit midge. One of my go-to uh, still water flies tied on a jig, great dropper fly. Um, you know, bottom fly in a rig, that's a size 18. And then a size 18 demon midge will be another good one for you if they do require a little bit smaller midge, getting a little bit picky. Did throw in a CDC calibatus here just for you to get eyes on because as we go into late May and early June, that's really when that starts to ramp up and you'll wanna be prepared with that stuff. And they may even eat one in the early spring for you. Then as we move into more of our retrieve style flies, um, we've um, got uh, the uh, Chen's BMW. That's a great damselfly leech crossover. Just one of my great still water attractor flies. Um, we've got a Jolly Rancher, which can be, you know, it's tied on a jig, super, as you can tell, super heavy chartreuse trigger bead can be used in an indicator rig or on a retrieve, one of my great still water patterns as well. Um, this is a jig style woolly booger with a rubber leg. Um, those things produce really well for us in still water venues um, throughout the summer. Um, just a little squirrel uh, leech with a tungsten bead black. That and black and olive will be a great pattern to retrieve. Um, Thin Mint, which is basically just a turbocharged uh, woolly booger. It's got that lateral line built into the tail, a little bit of color variation, tungsten bead, great one to go to. And then um, looking at a couple of baitfish style imitations, like I said, fish are, um, you know, they're, they're getting after other small fish. This is called a game, um, very similar to a game changer. This is called a flat liner. It's Kelly Gallup's pattern. It wobbles, so it's it looks wounded when you retrieve it. Um, throw that on an intermediate or, or even a fast sink tip and that'll do wonders for you. Um, just cast it out as far as you can, retrieve it, bury your retrieve links, um, mix that up until you figure out what fish are on. And then a baby gonga rainbow color that's uh, again kind of the same wheelhouse just more of a an attractor kind of small bait fish um, baby trout you know and those bigger fish are very predatory so um, hope hopefully that gives you a great idea of, of kind of what to focus on on not only our south park reservoirs antero spinning 11 mile but also local reservoirs and any still water in the state of colorado as we uh, move through spring and into the early summer. Okay, so hopefully a look at uh, those patterns will give you a just good generic idea of, of what to look for here as we uh, roll into the spring season on some of our high elevation reservoirs and local reservoirs. Uh, all of these patterns are, are very applicable no matter where you go, whether it be even Pueblo Reservoir, Brush Hollow, some of our warm water reservoirs, uh, and then obviously very dialed in for our South Park Reservoirs, Antero, Spinny, 11 Mile. These are all, all core flies and obviously we'll roll more into the Calabatus activity as we um, enter the month of June and then damsel flies down the line. But a lot of these patterns will really fish well throughout the season. Um, if you have any questions, please do call us toll free 888-994-6743 uh, extension one for the fly shop extension two for the guide office, whether it be questions about rigging flies. Um, if you want to come in, we can walk you through the rigging stuff. Love to do that. Um, if you're interested in a new lake rod, we've got a big uh, selection of six weight plus stuff. Um, that will be good options for you in every price point. Um, just maybe a question about lines because that does become more complex in still water situations. A lot of different line options. Um, we do carry uh, small tips called mo tips or versa leaders that you can add to a floating line without buying a new fly line. Um, you may wanna come in and talk about that. Uh, we'd love to walk you through that process. Um, always here to help with any questions you have. And lastly, we do have incredible um, guided powerboat trips with very experienced guides up on Spinney and Antero. 
So if you want to learn more about those lakes and, and how to approach them from a boat, whether you have a boat or just want to go out and, and have a really uh, relaxed time out on the lake, um, that's a great option as well. Um, again, call us anytime, 888-994-6743. Uh, and then we also have our great chat line on our website. Um, that's all always available to you during business hours. Shoot us an email anytime at info at royalgorgeanglers.com. Um, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a fantastic time out on the water. Hope you get out and enjoy some of our fantastic still water venues in the, in the Colorado territory. Um, and again, always here to help if you have any questions. Thanks so much for viewing. Have a very safe day out on the water.